All right, please introduce yourself, state your name and DOC number for the record. All right, Gordon uh, Gordon, 579 sir. All right, Mr. Gordon, my name is Brennan Kelsey. Along with me is Mr. Tony Marabella and Ms. Pete Freeman will be your panel. Have a parole interview, ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. You can take a, make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Looks like you got some people here that uh, have a brief statement. Daryl Miles, Dylan Gordon, Layla Gordon. Uh, then you just have people that are here in support. Dawn Gordon and Warden Gordon Jr. Yes, sir. Warren, Warren Gordon, DOC number 579767. You're a second class offender. Pro eligibility date 9-22-2020. Good time 9-28-2049. Full term 9-23-2050. 40 year sentence. Possession with habitual possession with intent to distribute methamphetamines. Here for a resend. Is that you were uh you were granted? And you're here for a recent. Does that sound correct? Uh, yes, sir. I right, would you answer Mr. Marabella's questions, please. Mr. Gordon, uh, how sorry, old are you, sir? How old am I? 59 years old, sir. And how long have you been in prison? In October, it'll be 13 years, sir. Uh, you were granted parole on August the 3rd of 2022. Let's talk a little bit about what you've done since then. Have you had any disciplinary write-ups since then? No, sir. Uh, have you taken any I, additional programs? What have you done while you've been? I know you've been waiting to go to Florida, but what have, what have you been doing while you've been in prison since August of 2022? Since August of 2022, I've basically right. been trying to find out ways to get addresses to end of Florida to get approved to get released, sir. Uh, what I, happened in Florida? Why it was it NAA, NAA ongoing? I'm sorry, what? I, they don't really tell us what happened. They don't really tell us what happened or why they denied us. From what I understand, it's because your residence wasn't approved. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I do know that. I, but I turned in five separate residences. And from what I understand, all of them were denied, sir. Well, that that's what I understand. And it appears to me that Florida is not an option for you. So you tell me what your options are. Where would you live if you were to get out? As of right now, I've, I've contacted the first 72 plus, which is a program in the uh, New Orleans area that provides uh, living and, and all, all sorts of programs that we can do. And I, they, I know they'll help me with a job and things to that nature. My plan is to get into uh, truck driving school, sign with a company, get my CDL, and go to work for one of these corporations through the uh, state, the United States, sir. That's my plan. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna probably have to take a where would you live, assuming you were Sorry. released? Let, let me finish the question. Where would you live, assuming you're released, and you go to First 72 for a while, and then you, you complete that program, you get your license, where do you ultimately want to live and reside? Oh, back in Florida, sir. Well, I that's, want to that, that, that's a real problem. I mean, they won't take you. Well, if I have to, sir, I have some friends here in Louisiana. Uh, one I might expect to uh, work temporarily for until I can finish the truck driving school. I'll end up getting me an apartment or a residence here in Louisiana and living and working throughout the state and throughout the country, I would think. I would assume you know, it would be Gordon, a, a world... Uh, Gordon, let, let, me, let me tell you what I have, okay? The information that I have from Florida is they denied yes. And the reason for the denial was an invalid plan of supervision. And it says, the offender has made previous attempts to transfer to the receiving state, Florida, by providing false information. This is not the actions of an inmate who has learned from his past ways of incarceration. Now the offender wants to transfer to an, up, to an unsecured place. Florida doesn't want you. You're not going to go yes, to sir. Florida while you're on supervision. So unless you've got another plan, okay. it's not going to work. 
I understand, sir. My, my plan would be to stay here in the state of Louisiana, like I was explained. I will get a temporary job until I can finish and get in my CDL license, sign with a company, provide myself with a residence and an apartment, and live on my own, continue to stay in touch with the first 72, and hope with their provide some assistance to keep me focused on what I need to do, sir. Warden, do you have any more information? I'm say that AA and NA. Warden, do you have any information uh, either about Florida or anything else about uh, Mr. Gordon that you can tell us? I've never provided false information. Um, no, sir. I mean, he and I, we discussed this earlier, and I mean, that was one of my little concerns was, was what do we do after the 72 in, in Louisiana? And, and of course, he told me the same thing that he, he told y'all is he's going to try to get a job, get some money and get an apartment. But that's about as solid as, as he can come up with. I mean, I have friends that uh, that are here that I'm pretty sure one of them's name is Robert Good that will provide me with a place to live at the end of first 72, whenever it, I, I don't even know how long the program is at first 72, but I know that when I, he's been a lifelong friend for almost 40 years, we worked together before I was locked up. So I'm almost hundred percent positive that he will provide me with a place to live. All right. Uh, that's all. Now I will hear from, uh, Daryl Miles, let's hear from Daryl, brief statement of First 72. What you got, Daryl? Okay, good morning. Uh, Daryl Miles here from First 72 Plus. Yes, we have a, uh, a long-term plan for uh, Mr. Gordon, which will entail him having resident in Louisiana. Uh, one, of our, uh, one of our options with people like Mr. Gordon is to get them housing in uh, the New Orleans area. First of all, the first 72 hours of his release, he'll be counseled by the Council of Alcohol and Drug Abuse, which is an organization that we partner with that deals with people that have past, have past dealings with drug addiction. Uh, secondly, we have a house curfew where Mr. Gordon would have to be in-house at 9 p.m. unless he is employed and that employment takes him beyond that 9 p.m. Uh, he'll be subject to random drug testing and he'll be in life skill classes continuously. Uh, like I said, regarding his housing, that will take place after our long-term program programming, which is six months to a year in his case. Uh, within that time, he'll, re he'll, be, uh, he'll receive a bank account provided by the First 72 Plus, and that will get him started on uh, saving money so he can uh, get an apartment and live comfortably in New Orleans. We understand that he's going to have to work to pay his parole uh, uh, fees and everything. So all of that assistance will be given to him once he starts his, in our program. So we have a, a long-term plan set out for Mr. Garden. I've spoke with his, his family on that. I've expressed to them that, that the possibility of him returning to Florida may not happen, but we can ensure that Mr. Garden will be set up in New Orleans where he can be a functioning citizen uh, just like the board uh, would like him to be should they grant him parole today. All right, With that, thank you. All right. Thank you. So you're saying you got housing for him from six to six months to a year. That's what you say. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have housing for him six months to a year. And that, within that time frame, that would give him uh, right. Right. time to to, to right. save money right. for his an apartment. Of. All right. Thank you. We'll hear from Dylan Gordon now. Brief statement from Dylan. Hello. Um, 
my name is Dylan, and um, so. Oh my God. Sorry. Don't, don't. Right. Sorry. Um, so my name's Dylan, and of course, that's my father. But um, we tried getting him with a sober living house over here, and the uh, parole officer or whatever whoever it is the probation officer said that she would show up and she never showed up or did anything to even try to get him approved for over here and I thought that was pretty messed up on her end but that's all I have all right thank you appreciate it we'll hear from Miss Leela Gordon Okay. I don't think we she was. She's not anymore. I'm going to go ahead and make a statement. Can you got your can't you. Okay. Can you hear me now? We can. Okay. Um oh, boy. It's pretty much what my brother was trying to say it was um the parole officer went to my to my older brother's nana's, his aunt, my mom's, my mom's, and then the professor was supposed to go to Miss Maggie's, which is the halfway house. And um, she never ended up going. Sorry. <laughs> and. I just feel like if he went, I just feel like my dad would have had a chance to come to Florida. And he would have been home for my graduation. <laughs> but the parole officer never went to to um the halfway house, but and she said she did. But when my mom talked to Miss Maggie. Miss Maggie said that she didn't go. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. All right, Mr. Uh, Gordon, would you like to the next statement you have? Uh, yes, sir. I, I, I feel, sir, that given the opportunity to be released on parole today. I'm not going to let myself down, my family down, because those are the ones I heard most as I sit here and watch them on this camera. <laughs> and I know that getting into this first 72 and giving housing for six months to a year and the backing that they're going to give me and the opportunity to work, save money, be able to get my own place. I'm 59 years old. Told. I've always been responsible in my life. I make a lot of wrong decisions. I will not lie about that. I've owned my own business since 1994 until I was locked up in 2010. Uh, it was a successful business. Uh, I just made the wrong choices in life. I think that I've learned my lesson after these 13 years. I think I've also grown older and wiser. Uh, as, and given the opportunity, I, I, I think that I have will be a productive member of society, sir. And I would greatly appreciate that opportunity. Thank you all. Thank you for your time. Okay, great. Pam, fair to vote? Yes. Mr. Mayor Bell. All right, uh, Mr. Gordon, uh, little has changed since you were here uh, back in uh, August of last year, except you can't go to Florida. Yes, sir. It's, uh, you know, my vote today would be to uh, grant conditionally upon your uh, having an approved residence by probation and parole, and uh, specifically uh, to go to uh, the first 72 for uh, at least uh, up to a year or, and, or until you get 
permanent housing approved by probation and parole. Uh, I don't know if you'll ever be able to go to Florida. I mean, you could make whatever efforts through the Office of Probation and Parole to attempt to get ICOTs to Florida yes, after you're out, and maybe that would work. But I need to caution you. Unless you get that, you can't be moving to Florida. You understand that? Oh, well. Uh, yes, sir. Was, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And I'll just make my life here in Louisiana. <laughs> with the same conditions as, as were applied back uh, in August, and that is two AA meetings per week, a prohibition for working in bars or restaurants in four hours of community service work. So good luck to you, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Mr. Craven? Uh, I concur. I vote to grant. Uh, as far as the interstate compact, uh, I worked with Probation and Pro for a long time. They're not going to grant it to a halfway house. Yes, if sir. you would put down one of your family members' residence, yes, they would grant it. So obviously what happened was y'all probably put down a family member, and then they said, no, he's going to a halfway house. And they're not gonna they're not gonna accept someone to a halfway house. Okay, thank so, you, sir. Thank so you. I would go to the first 72, do my six months, and I'd reapply to Florida with a permanent address, no treatment facility. Yes, sir. Thank you for that information. I appreciate that, sir. All right, two votes to grant your pro. Also, I'm gonna vote to grant your pro for the same reasons as stated. You'll have NAA two times a week. You can't work in bars or restaurants. You'll have four hours community service, uh, and you'll go to the first seventy-two. So you get permanent residence, or you get moved back, get back to Florida. Three votes to grant. Your parole's been granted. Good luck to you. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it very much. Congratulations.